In this video of our CNC version 3.2 I'm demonstrating basic steps of the build process. The basic tools needed to make a copy of the mechanics are a drill press, hex saws, a caliper, files, a vise, metal shears, a tapper and wrenches. Common tools in most workshops on this planet. The construction is made of iron square tubes with an edge length of 20mm and 2mm wall thickness. With wooden stripes, one aluminum and four iron angles you can build a guide for accurate sawing cuts. Some drops of water cool the sawing blade and extend the lifespan of this tool. I wear off three of them during the build process. A couple of angle joints is created by cutting short pieces of square tubes along two edges. After approximately 140 cuts, the mountain of iron looks like that. Next step to be done is drilling. I have mounted two aluminum bars on the table of my drill press which makes it easier to drill along the center line. You hit the nail if the drill flushes with the hole from both sides, a test piece was used for the adjustment. Many holes are 1 or 3 cm from the ends of the square tubes. An iron angle used as stopper is a good helper. I started with a 3mm drill. If a hole is also needed on the opposite side, you should not drill through the square tube, but bore from both sides, otherwise the drill will bend hardly, resulting in a misplaced hole on the bottom side or in a cracked drill. Next, the drill holes are widened to 5mm... ...to 7mm... ...and finally to 12mm where needed according to the drill screen. The square tubes are joined by 6mm bolts. Unplug the drill press... ...and remove the belt so that you can spin the pulley easily by hand. The 6mm tab is fixed at the drill press which grants vertical cutting of the threads. Used motor oil is a very cheap lubricant for the tool. Every couple of degrees reverse the movement to break the chips and so to clear the thread which prevents the tool from jamming. I've glued pieces of wood and screwed them on the table of the drill press to bore the holes of the angle joints. Never hold the tiny parts by hand, always use a caliper. Two metal sheets are used for the framework, one with bent flaps. With a square tube and two clamps you can bend the metal on your workbench using a hammer. After countless hours, the artist work is done and you can start the assembly. The screws I am using have a round head for hexagon tools. With that tool you can easily screw in the bolts even at hidden places. A couple of parts is fixed using the angle joints and you can use a washer only underneath one of the bolts, good to have screws with flat heads. In principle, split washers are as good or bad as normal washers. It's the correct torque that prevents screws from losing rather than the split washers. The thread in the square tubes is no more than 2mm in depth, but what there is barely more than a single turn. Use a test sample to find out what torque is a too high torque for your material. When I made the test I ruined the screw heads rather than the thread in the square tubes which is a good result. Turn in the screws loosely in the first run so that you still can bend the frame to make all parts fit. If the frame is assembled, tighten all screws from button to top. Using flat irons of the dimensions 20x4mm, I have added crossbars to make the framework even stiffer. 
a couple of distance pieces were cut from the flat iron bars... ...to make it all fit in. At the center point, the crossbars are linked through 6mm bolts and nuts. Assembling the carriage for the axis was the next step. Those carriages run along the guides with wall bearings of the dimensions 10 times 30 times 9 mm Handmade parts means worse tolerances, to compensate for that, one side of the ball bearings is designed to be pressed on the guides through threads. Adjust the mechanics in such a way that all ball bearings are spinning reliably when moving the carriages, but don't build up too much friction by pressing them too hard on the guiding tubes. It's time consuming but worth the effort to minimize the backlash of the mechanics. As a result you get a very stiff construction with precise movement along the axis. The rotational movement of the motors is turned into linear movement through 6mm threaded rods. The female thread at the carriage is formed with a heated nut in a stripe of acrylic plastics. After cooling down and grinding the edges, you have an accurately fitting counterpart for the threaded rod. The drilling is done after aligning the plastic stripe correctly and marking the hole positions. A second stripe with the female thread is needed to move the axis. The lower half is screwed at the carriage. The upper half is pressed on the threaded rod using two coil springs from an old printer. With that you get a low backlash linkage between carriage and the threaded rod. Once more there is, too much pressure results in too high friction, not enough pressure results in unwanted backlash. With the spring coils, the wear on the female thread is compensated. You can also use pieces of rubber tube instead of the spring coils. Use lubricant to reduce friction and so wear on the threads. The threaded rod is linked with the mechanics using two ball bearings. Those bearings are pressed on a square tube using nuts. You already know how to adjust, no more pressure than needed and enough to get a tight linkage that is free from noticeable backlash. Too much pressure results in too high friction. Furthermore, there is too much wear on the ball bearings because they are not designed to absorb high axial forces. Once more you must find the best compromise between backlash and friction. The correct adjustment is locked with an additional nut. The free ends of the threaded rods are guided by single ball bearings. The rod can still move in axial direction but oscillations of those ends are eliminated. DC motors from old printers are the simplest drive configuration for this machine. Because of the low torque of those motors, a gear is needed as demonstrated in a previous video. It is made from a disc with 20cm in diameter and cut from 5mm plywood. To get it more circular, my drill press is used as lathe. Here you can see a motor with a rubber roll from a printer forming the second gear of the transmission. I will show a variety of electronics and motors in subsequent videos. The table of the machine is formed by 9 square tubes. Adjust all tubes in parallel to the router with the bolts and nuts. Another time consuming process but necessary to get good results. When talking about results... Here I am processing another test piece of aluminum with the low tech configuration of the machine, now with a 3.2mm router bit. The pattern consists of a circle, a square and a triangle. 
The coolant is nothing but water and the circular flow is still in an experimental state, same as the software and the electronics. The router dives deeper into the metal with each run. Still not fast, but precisely. The result indicates that the mechanics is really solid without noticeable backlash, the router hits the trace of the previous run perfectly. Keep in mind that the CNC is still in an early state and there are many things to be improved over time. Have a look at the full resolution pictures of the samples on my project page or on Hackaday. That's where you can also find build instructions for making your personal copy of this machine. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!